Hi, I'm Layla from Instapage and in this video, I'm going to share with you some best practices for naming your landing pages and making full use of page groups to organize and streamline your workflow. So let's dive into it. Whether you have been using Instapage for a while now or are starting fresh in the platform, it's wise to put together a system to organize your different landing pages. We recommend structuring your landing page title to include the name of the channel, the campaign it's associated to, and the product or service you're promoting. So, for example, if I look at my pay-per-click landing pages, I have Google as the channel, I have Spring Q2 by One Get One 2022 as the campaign, and then I have Women's Shoes for my product or service. You'll see that for my second page, I have Men's Shoes here, but still underneath the same Google Spring Q2 buy one, get one campaign. If we go underneath the social media folder, we've got our social channels such as Facebook and Instagram. We have the campaign title, Spring Q2 buy one, get one 2022. And then we have different products or services that these landing pages will represent. With this naming convention, you can easily search for a specific campaign. So if I want to look at all spring campaigns, I can do that. And if I want to look at all campaigns within a specific quarter, I can do that too. And I can pull up all my Q2 campaigns here, for example. I can also look at a specific year like 2022. And then lastly, I can look at a specific product or service related campaign. So for example, if I want to look at just women's shoes campaigns, I can do that here. This naming structure gives you more flexibility when it comes to organizing and filtering your pages and campaigns, and it's a good starting point to work with. Once you start building and launching landing pages that will serve different purposes, you might want to begin organizing those pages into different groups or folders so your team doesn't get slowed down by the additional task of page searching. Page groups are pretty straightforward. We suggest creating the following evergreen groups for the life of your account. The first group is page layouts. These are where you're going to keep your page design wireframes that will allow you to easily create additional pages with your branding and design already in place. The second group is pages in progress. The name speaks for itself. It's good to signal to the team which pages are still in progress for visibility. And lastly, we have archive pages, and these are pages that have run their course and are no longer live and receiving traffic of any kind. You will eventually also want to create folders for your live default pages based on your landing page themes or messaging. You can also categorize your pages by channel, so each group would be categorized by pay-per-click, email marketing, paid social, etc by user persona or audience, so each folder would have pages for each of your respective audiences, or by time of the year, such as Q1, Q2, or spring, summer, fall, or winter campaigns. You can add a group by clicking the Add Group button top right. Next, you'll be asked to name your group. Here, I will name my group Email Marketing, and then click Add. Now, we can move a page into our newly created group either by clicking and dragging it or by clicking the three dots next to the page, selecting the Add to Group option, then choosing the group from the list. With these naming conventions for your pages and page groups, you can now keep an organized account so that every time your team logs into the platform, they know where to go and what to do next. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.